evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Jo Brand. In the news this week, after a keenly fought competition of the highest standard, Russian state media announces the winner of its Young Musician of the Year award. In Westminster, Sue Gray gets so bored waiting to deliver her report, she consumes an entire box of liqueur chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> and after a disappointing defeat, there are suspicions that the manager of Aldershot Town's half-time orange was spiked with LSD. Does a penguin get cold? <laughs> what way does your bath water? Go clockwise or anti-clockwise when you take the bugger. <laughs> Sam's had a lovely haircut. It's started to grow out now. Coops is here, working silently away. Robbie's over there. It's the first time he's been quiet today. So he's got a briefcase in, you know. He's got four Japanese talking dogs in there. On Ian's team tonight is a journalist who says she's baffled by people who don't use Twitter. To be fair to Ian, he's only just got rid of his wind-up telephone. Please welcome Camilla Long. <laughs> and on Paul's team tonight is a comedian who originally trained as an electrician and with the massive increase in energy bills, we're already grateful to her for wiring up the studio to the next-door hospital's dialysis machine. <laughs> Please welcome Susie McKay. We begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Camilla, have a look at this. Ah, it's newspapers. Obviously got a big story in it. it, oh. it it's this one. And that's the leader of the Labour Party and her deputy. <laughs> <laughs> There's Gandhi. Or, <laughs> or Randy, as lines. he's known. Oh, that's him trying to do a straight line. Well, this is the news about the way Shadow Minister Angela Rayner sits on a bench. And let's start with what did the political editor of the Mail on Sunday, Glenn Owen, splash all over the front page of his newspaper? Oh, well, I mean, there's a rude word for it, really, isn't there? I mean, you know, the truth. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a story sort of bubbled up at the beginning of the week that Angela Rayner had been distracting Boris by crossing and uncrossing her legs um, like Sharon Stone and Basic Instinct. And so Angela had been sort of brought into this by a, an anonymous Tory MP who said that this was all happening. Anyway, obviously Angela was very upset about this and was so upset about this that she repeatedly tweeted about it and went on the rain and wore a trouser suit in order to make the feminist point that obviously it's very disappointing that her... Um, Grandula is uh, the subject of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just, yeah. Ian's looking at me and saying, what's this woman talking about? <laughs> you know what this is about, Ian. Come I on. do. I just hadn't heard that word before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I read the story originally in the Mail on Sunday and it said um, Angela Rayner disrupted Boris's Oxford Union debating skills. And I thought, well, this isn't true because he doesn't have any debate. <laughs> <laughs> he has a modest sort of after-dinner comedy skills, providing you don't interrupt him. And if you do, he goes mental, <laughs> as, as happens in the Commons. So I thought, well, this is a very strange story. But then it turned out that she had been making jokes about it. Yes, she on a podcast. Been, yes. She actually even sort of used a rude word for it. And I, I you know, began Is that the word a... you've repeated? No, it's not. It's a very similar word. It does begin with a G. I think we're going to be showing that word later. So. Oh, right. <laughs> In what way? In what way? <laughs> I'm going to be uncrossing my legs. <laughs> I okay, have tried yeah. crossing and uncrossing my legs, but unfortunately I have fat lady pants, so I had a hysterectomy and... <laughs> and, and Ian, have you ever seen Basic <laughs> Instinct? 
I'm so on the <laughs> glad we got here so quickly. <laughs> I was intrigued that uh, when Angela Rayner said that some people think that because I had a comprehensive school education, I wouldn't be able to match uh, Boris in debate because he has an Oxford uh, uh, University education. And I wondered whether there'd been any kind of sort of public experiment over the last 32 years where two people with a similar educational background, one had been to Oxford, one had been to a comprehensive school, <laughs> where perhaps <laughs> their various wits could be tested via, let's say, a, <laughs> a TV news quiz. And... And, uh, and, and whether those results are now ready to be published. <laughs> I, I think it's too early. I think we've got to wait until the Sue Gray report has come out. <laughs> and then the police will look into whether the competition's been rigged for 32 years, which <laughs> it has. If only we knew that legs is what distracted Boris at the start of the pandemic. Because we could have had Chris Whitty get into Cobra beatings in his pants. <laughs> and he might just have paid attention to him at that point. I'd pay attention. <laughs> um... <laughs> A spokesman for Angela Rayner has described it as categorically untrue. Should we just give the journalist who wrote the story the benefit of the doubt? Because I'm sure he's a <laughs> lovely man. <laughs> Has he fallen onto a hot cross bum? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the story about distracting someone was actually trying to distract us? What else could it be distracting yeah. from? Is it a party? Is it is it a party gate thing? Was was Boris upset about party gate? So he part, he's the Tory MP in the we've not we've not considered that that he is the Tory MP giving that um, quote. Have you got any evidence for that? No. <laughs> well, I suggest we just run with it. <laughs> uh, how did Boris Johnson actually react to the Mail on Sunday's story, then? He said what he was going to do. It's a quote from King Lear. Mm. I mean, I'm going to do such things, I don't know what they are, um, but they should be the terrors of the earth. And because he's never really read anything properly, um, <laughs> this is a pathetic scene where King Lear, who's a useless leader, uh, is threatening revenge, which he then doesn't take. Uh... <laughs> I thought his reaction was to start watching porn in the House of Commons. <laughs> <laughs> so Boris Johnson also reacted by sending out a tweet which said, as much as I disagree with Angela Rayner on almost every political issue, I respect her as a parliamentarian and deplore the misogyny directed at her anonymously today. And he wasn't the only person to respond. Shortly after the Prime Minister's tweet, Culture Secretary Nadine Dorries also issued a heartfelt sentiment, uh, tweeting, as much as I disagree with Angela Rayner <laughs> on almost every political issue, I respect her as a parliamentarian and deplore the misogyny directed at her anonymously today. And to think she criticises the BBC for putting out repeats, for God's sake. <laughs> According to the Sunday Times, 56 MPs have been reported for sexual misconduct uh, to the Independent Complaints and Grievance Scheme, including three cabinet ministers and two shadow ministers in what is being called Pestminster Scandal. <laughs> the porn MP, there was one man um, who... I'm, ass I'm assuming it's a man. Um, there was one man who two women saw and they both went to report it. But I noticed that he was watching porn both in the House of Commons in the chamber and at a select committee hearing. <laughs> and you think, have you got nothing else to do? <laughs> yeah, but it's true, though, isn't it, when on film sets, when they make pornographic films, to get the uh, participants in the mood, they read out loud the minutes of parliamentary... <laughs> 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 You can sit in that chamber and get aroused while you're sharing that space with Boris, Gove <laughs> and Rhys Mogg. <laughs> you're probably a serial killer. I think that this MP was originally thought to be Ian Blackford looking at a photo of a pie. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> well, it's all a bit of a downer, isn't it? Um, let's cheer ourselves up with a burst of BBC daytime news. I've noticed a bee has come into these flowers, and isn't that magical? <laughs> Was that worth going live to Trafalgar Square for that? <laughs> so, everyone, what's worrying Labour MPs as elections approach? 
they're up against the worst government of all time and they still can't land a punch on them. <laughs> First of all, they're worried that Labour leader Keir Starmer lacks charisma and isn't attracting voters. One Labour MP said they are looking in the shop window, but they're not yet necessarily ready to buy anything. Bit like me outside a whole food shop. Um, <laughs> and another senior Labour source said, whenever I see Keir, the image that often comes to mind is a wooden plank. <laughs> I don't want to go in too hard on him, but he looks like the type of guy that would cut your grass when you go on holiday. <laughs> I was doing mine, so I thought I would just do yours. <laughs> so, what other government initiative did uh, one BBC newsreader have to unexpectedly announce? Let's listen to it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A senior government source says Boris Johnson has threatened to privatise the passport office if it can't clear backlogs and deliver better value for money. MPs heard yesterday that one woman waited more than five months for her daughter's passport. Mr Johnson is said to be horrified by the delays and said he would privatise the arse out of the organisation. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they used to just have the face in the passport? <laughs> <laughs> is that the normal way? I know either way you're not allowed to smile. <laughs> OK, uh, well, this is the Mail on Sunday story accusing Angela Rayner of trying to distract the Prime Minister. Lots of people have inadvertently done a Sharon Stone in the Commons, mainly when Keir Starmer's done a speech and bored the pants off them. Um, <laughs> according... <laughs> Thanks, madam. Um... It's Angela pod... Rayner. <laughs> <laughs> Also this week, the government was found to have acted unlawfully by discharging people into care homes without testing. Matt Hancock claims he wasn't told that Covid could be passed on asymptomatically. Well, to be fair, he might have been told, but he had Gina Colodangelo's tongue in his ear at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on, Paul and Susie. Yes. Take a look at this. Uh, oh. don't know who that is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Union Jack. Tablecloth being wiped down. That's obviously not Prince Andrew because he doesn't sweat. Um, <laughs> and uh, there we are. Always drink the Guinness before it settles. <laughs> Why are you drinking that? I don't know. I've no idea. <laughs> Jubilee. Yes, indeed. Uh, the news that plans to celebrate the Platinum Jubilee have yeah. been released. Uh, now, four nights of celebrations have been planned at Windsor Castle in May. Mm. Which unlikely double act are set to host ITV's coverage of the event? Ant and Deck. Paul and Dean. <laughs> Alan Titchmarsh and Tom Cruise. <laughs> uh, as a new double act. They're set to host one of the nights. That's a green room you'd want to be in, isn't it? <laughs> Do you think Tom Cruise is obsessed with the Queen like Donald Trump is and just wants to meet her and the only way he can get to her is through Alan Titchmarsh? <laughs> Great and unfortunate image. <laughs> So, that's May's celebrations sorted. And who are they wheeling out on Jubilee weekend? So, there's open-top buses for every decade that the Queen has been reigning over. And they are to be filled with national treasures, so nobody wants to be in the 1980s bus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be in a national disgrace dust cart at the moment. <laughs> Anyone want to join me? There's also uh, pensioners going to be on mobility scooters dressed as flamingos. Yes. <laughs> what an odd little island we are. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the pensioners are going to do a fly pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With Tom Cruise. <laughs> This parade would also feature a four-tier wedding cake baked by acrobats <laughs> on the moon, a trapeze artist suspended from a helium balloon bearing the 96-year-old's image, culminating in Ed Sheeran singing the national anthem. Is there going to be a plagiarism suit at the end of it? Uh, <laughs> what's the good news about oh. the Jubilee bank holiday? It's four days long. 
Yes, and certain places... The pubs are going to stay open, open. Oh, yes, yeah. until 1 right. o'clock in the morning. Pubs will be open to 1am, hooray. Uh, the bad news is that we probably won't be getting the proposed extra bank holiday every year, which is billed as a thank holiday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or as the dear. Tory MP who's watched the porn... <laughs> <laughs> Well done for getting there before I... That we've spared the innocent. <laughs> we've spared the innocent. So this is the Queen's uh, Platinum Jubilee celebrations. The four-day Jubilee celebrations at the start of June will feature celebrities including Cliff Richard, Alan Titchmarsh, Gok Wan, Torval and Dean and Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Good grief, no wonder there's a last-minute rush for passports. <laughs> uh, <laughs> The Queen's Jubilee celebrations will include Tom Cruise, who was recently in the UK filming the latest Mission Impossible, in which he tries to rehabilitate Prince Andrew. <laughs> um, <laughs> according to The Telegraph, it will be a celebration of multicultural society with real people telling their own stories, including those who came to Britain on Windrush. Presumably via Zoom from wherever it is we've deported them to. <laughs> June the 5th has been designated National Thank You Day, uh, where I assume the Queen goes around thanking us for all the money we give her. Um, <laughs> oh, I say, some... Fun. <laughs> And so to round two, the strengthometer of news. <laughs> um, fingers on buzzers, teams. Here's the first one. Yeah. Elon Musk has bought Twitter. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he recently declared that Twitter is the digital town square where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated. Really? So let's have a look at some of this vital discussion. <laughs> the first one. Yeah. For the record, I do wash my legs, but lots of people apparently don't. <laughs> well, lots of people apparently don't wash his legs. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a question about do you wash your legs in the shower or do you just let the water kind of... Oh, I'd, I'd always prefer a bath myself. I like to wallow. Can't wallow in a shower. I think you're getting drawn into it, Paul. I think... I think. No, the bath you... gets drawn into it. <laughs> <laughs> you, are you a long time since the bath was drawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, doesn't your footman do that for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll set Would him you up, like you me just to draw you a in. bath, Mr Hislop? No, I prefer a real one, thank you very much. <laughs> OK, uh, another tweet for another you. Tweet. Just catching up on Hignify, and I'm pretty sure Ian Hislop's tie has monkeys on it. That's not a tweet from now, Ian. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, <laughs> a total tosser of massive proportions. You're finished, you fat wanker. <laughs> I'll be off then. What I don't understand is why he's so rich. Well, he set up PayPal. Oh, right. I suspect he's probably quite good at money. <laughs> I'm, I'm not entirely sure what PayPal is. <laughs> it's a kind of postal order, Ian. Yeah. <laughs> How would anyone describe Elon Musk? I think it's fascinating, don't you? I thought he was some sort of scented candle for years. <laughs> <laughs> well, Guardian columnist uh, Marina Hyde described Musk as a sort of intergalactically successful Dominic Cummings. <laughs> Well, there are people protesting about Elon Musk's takeover, and they are led by Philip Schofield, <laughs> who's deleted his Twitter account in protest. Now rivers will run uphill and goats will mate with lions. <laughs> um... Is this part of the Queen's Jubilee celebration? <laughs> I hope so. I might, I might, I might watch that. Do you want to see some examples of things getting out of hand on Twitter? Yes. By all means. Yes. A notorious incident involving Rachel Johnson and David Cameron. Do you know about this? Rachel Johnson sent a tweet asking David Cameron, why are you such an egg face? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think we should make it clear that Rachel Johnson's account had been hacked. Um, <laughs> By me. <laughs> 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 
So, um, staying with technology, does anyone want to see a woman having a virtual reality tour of the House of Commons? She accidentally took a wrong turn and ended up in Jacob Rees-Mogg's <coughs> personal dressing room. Here we go. I'll have a go, Yeah, you can have a go, so that's all. Oh, my God! Oh! <laughs> Yeah, team. absolutely. Here's the next one. <laughs> we don't know. Next one. No, okay. I don't. <laughs> oh, yes, go on him. Is this the town of Bromyard wanted to invert the D to make them look a bit hipster and cool? Oh, that's a, that's a cool thing to do, is it? <clears throat> Apparently so. It'll look good in the rear view mirror, cos yeah. that's where tourists are going to see it, isn't it? <laughs> The town has been given £90,000 to spend in a bid to attract more tourists. Local resident Bill Potter said, This town has always been a bit backwards and these designs will make us a laughing stock. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, team. Mm. OK. This is one of the earlier kings of Britain, King Bugs of Bunny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he ate a huge number of carrots. And they've, there's been an archaeological dig in uh, York, and they found the remains of the king and a bit of a carrot, which proves that he always ate carrots he could see in the dark, and thus he overcame the Normans. <laughs> I can't believe that rubbish got a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> It's the news that Anglo-Saxon kings yes. weren't the big meat-eaters they were presumed to be. Is that why they were all called Egbert and Egfrith? <laughs> that should get a round of... No, all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Angela Rayner. Um, <laughs> researchers at Cambridge University examined the bones of skeletons and found they did not contain excess protein or signs of gout, as would be expected from a high-meat diet. What else did the researchers discover about Anglo-Saxon dining habits? <laughs> <laughs> they very rarely used Deliveroo. Yeah. <laughs> Peasants would host lavish meat feasts for their rulers from time to time, where people consumed over 4,000 calories in one sitting. Lightweight. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of feasts, do you want to see what one woman was served at a Toby Carvery recently? <laughs> oh. Yes, undoubtedly. <laughs> it's a foot-long pig in blanket hot dog. <laughs> Very <laughs> unattractive, isn't it? I have never been more assured that I'm a lesbian. <laughs> Don't you like bread? I'm off it. Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication Pub History Society, a magazine promoting the heritage of British pubs and the people connected with them. The very latest edition is outside now. <laughs> <laughs> and we start with what says what was one of the best things he's ever done. Oh, yes, I saw this. Resigning, says Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Pyrex says eating his own weight in guacamole was one of the best things he's ever done. <laughs> the answer is Adrian Charles says installing oh. a urinal in his oh. flat was one of the best things he's <laughs> ever done. Adrian Charles says the urinal in his flat sits beneath a stained glass window. It was just a glass window when he installed the... <laughs> Unsuspecting wedding guests served what? Divorce papers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Food laces paper. in tomato sauce. Uh, oh, it's got to be served cakes laced with cannabis. That's always the story. Oh, isn't Paul, it? <laughs> I'm going to give you that because you're virtually right there. Well done. It's actually unsuspecting wedding guests served lasagna laced with cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> This is a wedding in America after which the bride was arrested on suspicion of lacing the meal with cannabis. 
You know the old saying, something old, something new, something borrowed, something that will get you off your tits. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next. The most <laughs> famous incident connected with a pub was probably when what? Dean bought a round. They're clapping. The idea I'd go in a pub with you. Exactly. <laughs> Big idea. Well, the answer is it was probably when a male coach was attacked by a lion. Wow. This is what? from an article, yes, in the newsletter of the Pub History Society, which details the event in 1816, in which pub girls arriving at an inn were set upon by a lion. OK, next. Woman what for 20 minutes after trying to what? Woman fainted for 20 minutes after trying to believe that Ian bought a round at a pub. <laughs> Woman inflates her own tights for 20 minutes after trying to persuade her husband to blow in her ear. <laughs> Woman gets stuck in toilet for 20 minutes after trying to rescue phone. A woman in Washington State attempted to rescue her phone that fell into the pit of an outhouse toilet oh. by tying herself to the toilet using dog leads and <laughs> reaching in. Unsurprisingly, they gave way and the woman fell headfirst into it. <laughs> She literally got shit-faced. <laughs> and finally, UK's first what to be trialled in Scotland. Is it witch hunt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going dark. So I'll give you a clue. Oh, yeah. yeah, why not? It's the last one. It's a vehicle of some sort. A driverless car. Driverless train. In between a car and a train. Goes on the road. Lorry. Tram. Tram. Oh, it's a fucking bus, for <laughs> Sorry. I was expecting the word fucking to appear in there. <laughs> UK's first fucking bus to be trialled in Scotland. <laughs> anyway, Is this a request stop? It is now. Hey. <laughs> 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 you want to go up the dual carriage, mate? Yeah. So the final scores are Ian and Camilla have three, and Paul and Susie have seven. Oh, wow. Well done. Okay. On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Camilla Long, Paul Merton and Susie McCabe, and I leave you with the news that, as Sajid Javid looks for ways to cut NHS waiting times, a new medical breakthrough could allow men to carry out their own prostate checks. <gasps> <laughs> At a party in London, Prince Andrew's plan to attend royal events in disguise gets off to a promising start. <laughs> <laughs> and at the Louvre, French police are baffled as to how a daring art thief managed to walk out with the Mona Lisa. <laughs> After some Friday night tingles, go on, treat yourself. Watch Inside Number 9 on BBC iPlayer now. Well, stay with us on BBC One for fire, frights and family time. Not so happy campers not going out next.